That's okay. <laughs> it's there, it, it's things, of course, that we need to we need to know because we, we need to start understanding the concepts of Torah and the consciousness of Torah. And you, you know what what is Adam thinking? All right. And when we say Adam, we might as well say Zeron Pin, and we might as well say Havaya, because it's all the same thing. In other words. Our concept of God does not extend above Zeron Pin. That is, that is the aspect of God in this reality. We can't even imagine beyond that, above that, our scope of, of what God is. And so, when we go through this, Anytime you see, and we've said this before, Hashem, Elohim, um, anything like that, you can always plug in Adam there. You can always plug in Zeron Pim there because this is in, in this reality. Now, when you start dealing with higher realities, everything gets more and more and more and more and more elevated, obviously. So there's always... In other words, if, if you go into the inner room of God, He's got a secret room. If you go into that secret room, now that's the inner room of that room, and He's got another secret room. Infinitum. Infinitum. All right? So, um, we'll go ahead and start with our prayers, and then we'll, we'll talk momentarily about concepts of where this whole thing is going. So, um, um, let's see. We'd like to dedicate our tour study in this class to John Culliver, to Catherine, to Yehuda Hai Ben Matai Leia, to Sam Peake, to Susan Lipson, to Rusty Gerhardt, who I've got good reports from Rusty, and Sean Stafford, and um, anybody else have any anything we need to add on that? No, I think we're okay. Um, uh, we want to thank Hashem for the Torah. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the Universe, Giver and Creator of the Torah, and may all the Torah we learn today we remember. And we will read the prayer of the Ari, ruler of the universe and master of all masters, father of mercy and forgiveness. We thank you, our God and the God of our fathers, by bowing down and kneeling, that you brought us closer to your Torah and your holy work, and that you enable us to take part in the secrets of your holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant us with such a big favor? That is the reason we plead before you that you forgive and acquit all of our sins, and that they should not bring separation between you and us. This word separation is the key to Torah. And that's what this is all about. This, even in the prayer of the Ari. Mm -hmm. so, so even these wise men, even if you read this, if you read this prayer and listen to this prayer, it, it's encompassing everything. May it be your will before you and our God and the God of our fathers that you will awaken and prepare our hearts to love and revere you. And may you listen to our utterances and open our closed hearts to the hidden studies of your Torah. And may our study be pleasant before your place of honor as an aroma of sweet incense. And may you emanate to us light from the source of our soul to all of our being. And may the sparks of your holy servants through which you revealed your wisdom to the world shine. May their merit and the merit of their fathers and the merit of their Torah and holiness support us so that we will not stumble through our study. And by their merit, enlighten our eyes in our learning. That is as stated by King David, the sweet singer of Israel. Open my eyes so that I will see the wonders from your Torah. Because from his mouth, God gives wisdom and understanding. May the utterances of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you, God, my strength, and my Redeemer. Oh, now. Did you have Russell on that list? And <laughs> Russell. We'll <laughs> throw Russell on there. Okay, all right, so can anybody, I guess mainly you two lovely <laughs> ladies, give me a synopsis, 
or, or synopsis. Synapsis is really the more correct term. <laughs> a synopsis of what has happened since the golden calf. Because this, this Parsha, all right, uh, uh, well, let's, the, the next Parsha that we're going to study today, Akrim Mot, all right, happened four Parshas ago. It didn't happen when it's written in order. Mm -hmm. It happened four Parshas ago. But its context and its content has to be now because of where the thought of Hashem, the thought of Adamic consciousness is going. All right? So, what has happened over the last four or five weeks of Parshas? We had the golden calf, and as soon as that happened, what, what, what did God start doing with the Torah for tikkun, for repair? Well, they started doing the um, making the, the tabernacle. Okay. Well, he, he gave them all, all the all list, the list. All the list of all the things that were that was ultimately going to be the 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 central coordinate where it would all be done. Mm -hmm. But what did he have to do before that? The first thing he did is Take he separated the air of rock. Separated the air of rock. Mm -hmm. Then what did he do? He separated the priest. Right. And these are going to be the priest. And then he, he, so he started from the bottom and started separating all the things. The men from the women. Then he did the men from the women. Mm -hmm. Right? And then, then what did he do? He took account. And, well, let's, well, let's go on the line of separation. Okay, separation. Then the he, animals? Then he separated the animals. What's kosher, what's non-kosher. Okay, then he went into what? Sacrifice. The sacrifices. sacrifices. What? What? Separating this from that. Then, then he went into. Also, with the the uh, sacrifices with the 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 grain, the Se plant, and, and, and mineral, yeah. and separated every every division of every sacrifice, starting from the lowest. Inanimate to the mineral to the vegetable to the to uh, the flesh. So Sep he's separating out everything. Now, then he went through the bodily fluids. We learned, mm -hmm. yes. But he also separated out from speech. Yes. Last week. Mm -hmm. All right, and he's and so. Now what we're going to see is all these things. So he's going from the most external, the largest group, down, 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 to now it's going to be personal and it's going to be body and soul. All right? So every one of these, so what he's doing is is he's having to separate out what did he do in creation? He separated night and day, heaven and earth, blah, 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 this and that, man and woman. Everything was separation, separation, separation. Why? And, and, and this, is, this is kind of a hard concept because of, if, if you separate something out from God, what is that? It's idolatry. Right? Mm -hmm. But yet, all he's doing is separating. But what it's doing is not separating something from itself. It's separating it from the tohu. For what purpose? Why would he separate? In other words, why would he, if Adam and Eve were back to back, why would he separate them? So they could turn face to face. For what reason? For union. For union. For union. 
So all of this separation is for the purpose of union. Union from below to above. And as you unite everything that he has separated out that's pure to unite with him, it's elevation. That's why all the offerings are elevation offerings and this and that. So 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 let's so let's let's get our concept here of 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 what he's of what he's doing. He's separating out everything for the purpose of uniting it back together. Now, he's actually he, he's actually stretching himself because God can't detach himself from himself. Adam can't break away from himself. But what it is, it's stretching it to the very, very, very point <coughs> which it's, it's separating this point from this point, but it's still attached. Does that make sense? It's not separating cut off, so to speak. It's, it's stretched to the point so that it can snap back. Now, there's things that he does, does cut off. You know, the foreskin, the, th the klepa. He's trying to cut the klepa off that has got a life of its own, that has no holiness. But buried within that klepa is the guva rote, the holy guva rote, that everything needs to operate. And this is the other side. This is evil. That's why. God has never, ever, ever destroyed evil because it is contaminated guvarot that once all of it's washed off and cleansed and separated out, it's going to be the very me mechanism that he uses to, to regenerate and make the world to come. That's the very rocket fuel. And, and, and as we studied about the Gergururim, the Gentiles are that very guvarote thing, that very external thing that's going to trigger that. Because it's the furthest thing from the center. All right? And Israel, Jews, being the center of Adamic consciousness, once, once it goes, it's just going to... It's just going to go right in. All right? And so... This is the this is this is why he says I talk to Moses face to face. See what he's talking about there? He's not he's not meaning let's let's say on Peshat, he's literally saying I talk to him face to face. But they're in union. Mm -hmm. Utter union. Alright? That's the difference from the way he's spoke to other people. All right? So, um, be, because Moses put away his wife, Sephora, we know that, you know, and Miriam comes against saying, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. All right? But she, she was correct and she was right. But Moses separated from her to unite with Hashem, so there had to be separation there. Mm -hmm. But on Asiya, she was correct. But where he was... Did she not know where he was? Well, well, yes, yes, she knows where he's at. But it depends on where you're looking from. If she's From where she's looking from, it, it, it's correct. But where he's looking from, what is 3D union? What's 4D union? What's 3D separation? What's 4D separation? It, it looks different than here down here. Because she can't see that. All she sees is her where she's at. She's absolutely correct. But it brought on her tsara'at. Alright? So, this is, this is where this whole thing is, is going. Alright? Because he's separating out everything that he can to purify everything he can so that it can all return cleaned up, and now we're going to get into uh, 
Metzorah here, Metzorah means one who has Zorot. One who is afflicted with this. Now, um, when, when, you, when you read through this Parsha, there's all, there's a, a it's, it's all about how to cleanse something. Mm -hmm. Right? It's all about how to cleanse something. But, not only is this cleansing it 3D, it's cleansing it 4, 3, uh, you know, 2D, it's cleansing it 3D, it's cleansing it 4D, it's cleansing it 5D, because light overlaps itself. Anything that happens here carries on. Alright? So, so, because we're going to learn the klepa is stuck. There's four levels of klepa. How many worlds are there? Four. Four. So for every world, there's a klepa stuck to it, except for the very top of Atzilut. And so every one of these things that he's doing, that Adam is doing, that Moshe is doing, is to affect each one of these realms, as we've learned by the kind of offering that it is. Mm -hmm. All right? So, let's get into the Parsha here. And we're, we're, we're going to not blow through this Parsha because I am going to read some stuff out of apples that is, that is, that is we, we need to. And, and I'm going to go through the Zohar portion, but there's not, there's not a lot there. Um, but we, we need to see that it, it's the Torah itself as we always say, Torah trumps everything. It's the Torah itself that is what does all this purification process. I'm going to turn on a little air. Does that sound good? Yeah, it sounds good. A little bit. Okay. Now, let's read here. And Hashem spoke to Moses saying, This shall be the law of Metzorah on the day of his purification. He shall be brought to the Kohen. And the Kohen shall go forth to the outside of the camp. The Kohen shall look and behold. Now remember, anytime we see the word behold, we're talking angelic, right? We've learned that. And then there's a space there, so we know something happens, right? All right? And then it says that Tzara's affliction had been healed from the Metzora, from the one who had Tzara'ah. All right. The Kohen shall command for that person to be purified, and there shall be taken two live clean birds, cedar wood, crimson thread, and hyssop. So they list some things, which we're going to find out what they are. And the Kohen shall command for one of the, that one of the birds shall be slaughtered into an earthen vessel over spring water. As for the live bird, he shall take it with cedar wood and crimson thread and hyssop, and shall dip it and the blood into this. And, and it, it goes on and on and on. But it's all talking about purification. All right? Now, this is talking about purification on, on the Peshat level. Right? So, he has, he has the, the birds, and then he has the lambs. Uh, let's see here. Turtle doves. Uh, and then he's got to remove stones from his house all these different things so what does Tzara'at contaminate we learned that it was basically the soul because evil speech Lashon Hora produces Tzara'at which is un which is badly translated as leprosy. Because we know leprosy is a skin disease. But we also know that there are many types of manifestation of a spiritual attack because when you attack the upper levels, the upper levels, don't they don't attack you, but you blemish them and it allows the levels of klipa in those levels to attack you. Alright? So, what do y'all think are some of the most common 
What would y'all say in America is the most common mental Sarah? The term, oh my God. No, 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 no. What effect? What the news? <laughs> what 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 uh, condition? What medical condition? Oh, medical. Oh. What um, medical condition do you think in America is the most prevalent, prominent Sarah? Depression? Yes. Depression. That is straight, pure, klepa attack. Is what it is. The only cure is spiritual purification. So. Not according to the drug companies. Not according, <laughs> not, not according to Pfizer. All right. Now. Y'all learned, we talked about this and these, mm -hmm. right? These is the klepa, the evil, the evil side. This is the holy side. What does it say here in verse 2? This is the, and what, what is the law? The Torah. This is the Torah of the Metzorah. So what is the cure? This is the Torah of the Metzorah. In other words, this is the, the, the Torah is what cures the affliction. Most people who study Torah are not depressed and you know that study it. There, there's one there's one thing to to read it and hear it and, and, and all that, but, but there's one thing to study it. Mm -hmm. Alright? So now <clears throat> isn't it interesting here? That these people are brought before the Kohanim. Mm -hmm. Think lofty. And the Kohanim shall go forth outside the camp. And he shall look and behold. So what do you think this is talking about? On a higher level. Because Sarah attacks the soul. The soul, when it leaves the body has to stand before the Kohanim. Courts of heaven. Yes. And the angel, Michael, the whole nine yards. Because Samael is responsible for Tzara'at, so Michael is responsible for the cleansing. Alright? So, now, this, we're, we're, I'm going to... Uh, let, let, me, let me start in the Zohar here. And, and, and then what we're going to do, um, it talks, of, you know, we, we've talked about a, the woman with the issue of her blood and the time of her blood, okay? So, what is a woman? Woman is Malchut. Woman is here. All right. When, when we hear the term woman or bed is malchut, there's Rachel is malchut, Nukva is malchut, you know, there's there's so many terms that, that go here. The Israel is malchut, so Israel is the woman. So you, you, you can't ever say, you, you cannot ever say, well, it says that when you're when the woman is in the time of her month, that, you know, uh, honey, out of the house. See, that, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> because it is, we understand at the time of the tabernacle, they were putting them outside the camp because the evil tohu and the demonic presences that feed off of dead blood, dead, the dead part, things that aren't alive, they, they didn't want it near it, right? We, 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 we've learned that. But what this is talking about is in your death. Because the blood is the nephesh. All right? And in the time of your nephesh is your soul. And when your soul separates from your body, the congregation of Israel is the body. So when the... When if, if you brought, you had it on a grand scale, let's bring it down to a personal scale. 
You know, it, he's given it here on on the on the congregational scale, but it's but as you dig deeper into the levels, it's 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 going to break down into and when your soul leaves its body, what does it have to do? It has to be purified, right? Mm -hmm. So so this whole thing is about purification of the soul. Now <clears throat> they're writing it. Hashem is writing it, you know, on a external level. If, if you know, if you have zara'at, this is what you got to do, pashat. Now, <clears throat> but it's it's emanating every level. So when you have zara'at <clears throat> and your time of blood and your time of death, your your soul is going to leave your body, and it's going to stand before the kohanim, and you're going to be purified. And he's going to say, you're pure. And then you're going to go to back, um, you know, they let him back into the land, but that's back into Malchut. What Malchut? The Malchut of, of Gan Eden. The lower Gan Eden. And then, and then higher and higher and higher and higher. So, that's, that's, where, that's where this whole thing is headed. So, let's, uh, let's get into this a little bit. Now, it says, Only those who study Torah and abide in all her ways are protected by guardian angels and have the Shekhinah resting upon them. Come and behold, the evil tongue of the serpent, which, which was spoke to the woman, brought death upon the man, the woman, and the whole world. Thus it is written, and their tongue is a sharp sword. Therefore, be afraid of the sword. And Isaiah says, uh, "My sword shall devour, shall devour flesh." That is the one who has a sword in his tongue. The one who speaks of with evil tongue is punished with the sword that destroys all. For this is mahut from the side of judgment. This is the meaning. This shall be the Torah of the leper, which is verse 2. This shall be the Torah of the Matzorah. That is, Malchut from the aspect of judgment, which is called this, judges the leper for his evil tongue because the, it, the plague comes from the evil tongue. Just as it did with the serpent and Eve that caused the whole fall, so too when you speak judgment upon somebody you cause the same effect in the upper worlds. It's the same thing as the serpent and Eve. It, 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 it's, there's, there's no difference. That's why it is such a horrific sin. Because it's what caused the, the whole mess. All right? Now, when it, it, it says, Rebbe Elazar says, when a time comes for the soul to leave the body, it sees the Shekhinah. And it goes forth toward her with joy. But if a person was not righteous, the Shekhinah leaves and the soul mourns. Because it is separated from the body and from the Shekhinah. Afterwards, both soul and body are punished and then purified. This is, this is what the Peshat is talking about in the text. When the time comes when the, when the soul must depart from the body, the soul leaves... Uh, does not leave the body until the Shekinah shows herself to it. And, it. and the Shekinah departs from him and his soul is left behind and mourning over its separation. But it has to be separated so it can be purified. Now, afterwards, both the soul and the body are punished by the hands of the angel Duma. The body is sentenced to the grave until it returns to dust. And the soul is sentenced to the fire of Gehenna for several trials <clears throat> until its time comes to be punished. After being punished, the time comes for it to be purified. The soul comes out of Gehenna and is cleansed and it sins like a white, uh, 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 iron whiten and fire. Angels ascend with it until it arrives in the lower Gan Eden, where it is cleansed by water and perfume with its spices, as is written perfume with myrrh and frankincense. It stays there until its time is over when it must be far from the righteous in the, in the upper garden of Eden, separated from the camp. That's the whole... You see, 
the the whole thing mirroring in the upper worlds mm -hmm. is going on right here in the Parsha, in the camp of Israel, in the congregation. When the time comes for it to send to the upper Gan Eden, it is sent stage after stage until it is brought as a as a sacrifice on the altar, meaning it is brought to the nukla of Malchut, which is lower Gan Eden, which is called an altar. And and Abraham erected an altar, and all it, this is all talking about Malchut, you know, and you sow. All, all the connection. After separation, there must be union. Union. What was on? What is sitting on the altar? Uh, the Evenstia, the cherub, the male and female cherub. Why? Because there has to be union. Okay, and we're going to get into that. This is the meaning of, and this shall be the Torah of the Matzorah. Uh, Matzorah. Namely, uh, and in the day of his cleansing, he shall be brought to the priest, which is in uh, verse fourteen twelve in Vayikra. Namely, the supernal priest above, who is the angel Michael, Michael. This is the fate of a soul that has not been defiled much in the world, that, ha that can still be healed. That is one pulled out of the Noga, separated out of the Noga, right? Which we, we, we've studied. Otherwise, that which is crooked cannot be made straight. Now, the Mazora comes from the words Mazi Ra. Ra is evil. So, one who speaks evil. But it's also one who has tzara'ah. It's the same. This is the one who spreads evil. Then the priest shall command him to be cleaned with two birds. And we're going to go over the two birds. And it's very deep. <laughs> for for uh, it, is, it is known that a cedar tree is to ferret. From the cedar tree that is in Lebanon. That cedar tree, which is to ferret, can strike roots only in Lebanon, which is Bina. So Lebanon, cedars of Lebanon, we're talking about to ferret Bina. All right? We have already learned this, but the, what about the Hissa? Remember, it talked about these two birds, and, it, and then it goes into, and it lists all these things here. It says, two live birds, two live clean birds, cedar wood, crimson thread, Hissa. Right there. That's mm -hmm. the that's the thing. All right. Well, here's what it is. The priest shall command him to take two clean live birds. Why live? Because it may, it's talking about living creatures, which is in uh, Ezekiel uh, one fifteen, which corresponds to the uh, a true prophet, namely the two things Netzach and Hod. The living creatures. Because what is you sowed? It's the living. What are the creatures? Netzach and Hod. Two live birds. Alright? <laughs> now, in regards to a cedar, cedars to ferret, scarlet, side of Guvarot, and the hyssop is you sowed. And it's all about you. So that gives the sustenance of the congregation to the Shekinah. Therefore, cedar wood and hyssop, which are to ferret and you sowed, go together. That is why they are considered as one. So, all it's it's all constr re reconstructing. Um, there is a a verse that talks about. Uh, uh, the priest, all right, and so we just talked about Michael being the high priest, which is another aspect of Metatron being the high priest. But who is the high priest below? Aaron, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is what it says Aaron, who is the best man of the queen, made a dwelling with her to attend her house. So you know, they built a tabernacle that is the house of the queen of the Shekhinah. And who is the best man of the queen? Aaron. All right. And what does it say about Aaron? He was perfect for this after the supernal model of the Hesed of Zeronpin and was called high priest. 
Whence do we know that? For it says in Psalms 110.4, You shall be a priest forever after the manner of Melchizedek. Talking Aaron. about Aaron. And of course, y'all heard that all your life in the Christian church about, oh, Jesus is the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. No, it's Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> so I wanted to clear that up. It's Aaron, meaning that a priest forever is Hesed, and his duty is to bring Malchut, which is called Malik Tzadik. The name Melchizedek is Malik Tzadik. It's a tzaddik. Mm -hmm. All right? Which is malchut and you sowed through hesed, through mercy. Let's see here. All right. If a woman has an issue of her blood, this is the same meaning of the verse. The sword of Hashem is filled with blood. Malchut is a sword and also a woman. And is filled with blood. That is judgment. And issues and and an issue of her of her blood many days, not in the time of her menstruation. This is the same meaning in the verse. Therefore Hashem has watched over the evil that is brought upon us. And we have learned this by their sins, that the wicked cause the Holy One, blessed be He, to bring punishments to the world before their time. So, in their in your time of blood. See see how that's going on? And, and, in other words, it, it, do y'all remember the, 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 pro, uh, the, 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 the uh, I think it's a proverb or maybe a Song of Solomon where uh, he wrote, there's a time for this and there's a time for that. Lamentation. Yeah, there's a time for this and a time for that and a time for this and a time for that. There are times when you don't see Aaron could go in there whenever he wanted, only when the time was right. Mm -hmm. You know, there there might have been a time there might have been a time today where he couldn't have went in, but there may be a time tomorrow that he could go in. But he knew what that time was, and we're gonna we're gonna be able to tell. I'm gonna tell you how he knew. We're going to get to that in a minute. Can we apply it to our own lives? <laughs> but, but in, in other words, there's times when if you speak judgment on everybody, Torah says God will not hear your prayer. So you have to ask for forgiveness and purify yourself because you can't go into the sanctuary when it's not time. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so there are times to go in, there are times not to go in. All right? And this is the secret of the time of her menstruation, when there's judgment at hand. In other words, so sometimes the world is so corrupt and evil speech that the judgment decree has been sent out, and, and there ain't nothing you can do. You, 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 you know, you, you stay away because judgment is imminent. And if you get in the path of the sword, you're in the path. All right. And that also talks about the that's also alluding to the end times. When judgment is going to be brought, there's going to be nothing they can do or say. They will he will not hear it. Because there's not it's not the time to hear it. All right? And the days of the issue from her uncleanliness, which are the days what are the days of her uncleanliness? The wicked both pollute themselves and, and another place with their sins, as is written, because he has defiled the sanctuary of Hashem. So, if we are to help Adam in any way, we can't hinder him by doing the same thing that caused the fall to begin with. <laughs> which is the evil speech and it is the most difficult thing on planet earth is to not cast judgment on a person it is the most difficult so I'm going to now um, 
read something here out of the uh, apples. We've gone about an hour. It's gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna finish up just about good on this one. Now, a while ago, I was speaking about Leviathan. Right? And remember, in our classes before, I, I I spoke of that that God killed the female Leviathan and castrated or emasculated the male Leviathan. All right. Um, we're now at the point of our understanding where we can clear up what that is. And that's what Rabbi Bax and I were just talking about. All right? um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you I'm, I'm going to give you an overview because when I read through this, it's going to sound like oh my gosh. All right? <clears throat> but here's, here's it in a nutshell. There is anytime we say Leviathan, hey John, can you put your side on me please? <clears throat> anytime you hear the word Leviathan, you immediately think of what? Anybody online? What, what, what one word comes in, what one Kabbalistic term comes into your mind? Da'at. 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 Now, what is the theme of our story today and what has been the theme since what has been the theme since the golden calf? Separation. Separation. Separation and what, Russell? Da and union. And, and union. And it can only be accomplished through? Da Da'at. Da and Adam knew his wife. Right? Can only be accomplished by Da'at. Which is? Leviathan. So, he killed the female. Actually, he... Remember, death is only a lower state of living. It's not utter destruction. Don't confuse that. And he castrated or emasculated the male. So, we had just gone through the demonic things that eat on the feminine aspect of hygiene, of sexuality, and we've studied on the male emanation, spilling of seed as well, because that comes from yesod, lower yesod, right? Which is only fallen to ot. So it is the ot. So it's Leviathanic. Are y'all following me? The new word. So, so everybody's with me. Now, because of the, the shattering of the vessels, which happened in the ot over here, in the kings, the guvaro would be so strong if, the, if that unmitigated guvaro mated the world could not take it. It shattered the vessels to the in the beginning. That strong, holy, godly guvaro shattered the vessels. God's passion and his fire was is so strong, was so strong for creation, crea his creation couldn't even take it. So he had to remove. lower female Leviathan, the Guvarot of Guvarot, he had to lower the intensity, had to die, and he had to remove the ot of the male so that it could not conceive and have union with the female, which is Samael and Lilith. Right? So what does Samael do? He, he goes after Eve. Yes! And if what does Lilith do? I'm going to mess up. goes after Adam. You see how it sustained itself? So, the two birds. 
Y'all ready? <laughs> the priest shall take two live birds, ritually pure birds, and the priest shall offer these birds as a slaughter over fresh water in the earthen vessel. He shall take the birds, and we know the story. This procedure is the rite of the purification of Tsara'at, so a person can be cured. These things represent in negativity, antisocial, negative emotions, depression, etc., etc. Spiritual, mental affliction. You know? These are the Klippa evil shells. Now, Even on Gentiles. Sure, we live in the Klippa. We are it. It's worse on us than anybody. Why? Because we don't have Torah. All right? Now, we've discussed the shells, and there's four worlds, Atsilut, Berea, Yitzira, Asiya, right? Mm -hmm. Well, these are the two birds. We have been taught that there is a creation above, the world above, and when the herald goes forth, the world trembles and shakes, and there emerges from it two birds. Their abode is under a tree, wherein it is appearance of life and death. One bird flies northward, the other southward when at dusk and when at dawn. In order to understand this passage, we have to understand a few things. First of all, there are four worlds, which we discussed. In the realm of holiness, so are there four impure worlds. These are the four klepa that Ezekiel talks about in his vision. You know, the, the stormy wind, the fire, and, and all that. All right? <coughs> now, in the world of Atsilut, the shells are only opposite the back of Zah and the Nukva. So, if, you know, we have our little little deal here, if you notice, I will show you here how this works. Luckily, we have this. We're going to call this top world Atsilu. So, when the lower world sits on it, as you can see, it's only on Zah and Nuke. It's not up here. So, so if this is a side of holiness, guess what? This is a side of Klippa. It's only there too. Right? As it, as it goes down, it gets higher. So, in the world of Berea, it's opposite the back of Ema and opposite the back of Zahnuk. As it goes to Yitzira, it's opposite Abba and Ema and Zahnuk. And as it gets to the world of Asiya, the lowest world, the Klippa, is opposite all five part Sufim. Arik, Abba Ima, Zan Nuk. Now, uh, as we have explained... This is where we needed a chart. Huh? This is where we needed a drawing. Um, Cause that's hard to, it's, it's hard to... It's hard to visualize to get that. Well... Um, but we'll if, work, you might work on that later well, on. Well, if, if you visualize overlapping light, that, okay. you know, that... that it over it only overlaps Atsilut to here. Right. And then and then because there's already Klepa here, that this is gonna extend up to the next level. And huh. because there's already Klepa there, it's gonna extend it's gonna con the, the lower of this one's gonna contaminate the upper of the next one as it goes down. But it, it, it does it in order from Zah and Nuke to Abba Zah and Nuke to, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, to Ema Zanuk, to Abba Zanuk, and to Arik, Keter, and then it does, and so, in other words, Asiya is fully contaminated, right? That, that, that's what I want you to, to get. Okay. Now, okay. furthermore, we explain that these are palaces, and in fact, twice seven, seven male palaces, seven female, just as female full stature extends as high, but the female stature only extends as high as the male chest. So there's there's the, the female aspect of this klepa, and there's the male aspect, obviously. Female only extends as high as the male chest. Overlapping light. <coughs> now, this and this applies and extends down to the feet. This applies to all four worlds. This is why women are shorter than men. Most women come to their husband's chest. So, go on. <coughs> I 
think we can skip some of that. Oh, now it uh, these these two birds and are the the basically the the two brains right and left. Okay. It should be kept in mind that through these shows of Berea, I don't want to go through that. This is holy part two. All right. The difference, however, is the male and female evil part Sufim only possess two brains. Hokman Bina. Why? Because he removed the Ot. He on Leviathan he he castrated him. What he did, he took out Le, is the Ot. So there's only two Hokman Bina. While the male uh, part Sufim, uh, the, that's the female. While the male part Sufim has Hokman Bina the Ot. And that's why he had to take it, that da'at out, because it possessed the da'at. The holy female part Sufim possesses two brains, as we were taught. Women's da'at is light. Now, this concept alludes into Zohar. It's called the other god, i.e. evil, is emasculated. The Leviathan, that Leviathan is emasculated, <clears throat> so it would not have desire to pro procreate. And it does not multiply or bear fruit. For if it were to bear fruit, it would turn the whole world into chaos or commonly known as Tohu. <coughs> the explanation of this is according to the verse, e verse Ephraim shall say, what more have I to do with idols? When I respond and look to him, I became like a leafy cypress. Your fruit is provided for me. In other words, the supernal coupling of the holy Zah and Nuke produces fruit, i.e. the souls of Israel. Now, it goes on here to say, that this is the this is a problem for the Gentiles, okay? Because we're from that side. All right. This is why Gentiles have a horrible time getting Torah. Because you have to have the ot. Mm. You see? And we don't have it. It has been removed, but it's not far from us. You have to go get it. Okay. You see what I'm saying? And, and and so and so that's why all these all these rabbis say, oh, you only have a nephesh, you don't have a ruach and a neshama. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't that you didn't have one to start with, or it couldn't have been removed. It is separated. We have to go gear. Why is something separated out? To purify it. To fix it. Union for union. Yeah. But to be fixed. Yeah, meditating. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. By meditating. Yes. By meditating. Yes. Go get it. Yes. So the nephesh issues forth from the nukva directly. The neshama is the life, breath of life. The ruach is the spirit. Originate originate in, in Zah, which couples with nuke. The seminal drop transferred through intercourse comes through the brain of the ot, for this is the brain that reconciles the bridge and bridges the, the male with the two brains, Hokma and Bina, of the woman. This is why men and women think different on a Peshat level, right? Men are more analytical, women are more emotional, right? This is this is why, all right? Would so, you repeat that, please? Why? I, no, be, the first. Be, the, be, because, the, because the separation of the ot. Okay. That's what, that's what union is for, all right? Okay. Because... When when they when the two become one, then it's whole. it's whole. Yeah, no coupling is possible without the odd. This is why the Bible refers to intercourse as knowledge. Huh. And it says no man had known her. The reason is because without the odd, there is no inter intercourse at all. Now, I'll, I'll bring all that up. Uh, it says, I bring that all up to get to this point here. In the realm of evil, however, there is no da'at, not even in the male. They possess two brains. And this is part for this these two birds, you know, because they're dealing with evil. All right? It is known that the term other god refers to the male aspect of evil, as it, it is clear from the usage in the Zohar and the passages, particularly in the verse you shall possess no foreign god. <clears throat> this is why it calls evil the other god, emasculated, no, having no desire to procreate. The female shell obviously can't 
the, the female shell obviously cannot be emasculated, but only frigid or killed, as our sages say in regard to the great serpents. And it is said that God castrated the male primordial sea creature, the Leviathan, and killed the female in order to, pre to prevent them from procreating in their species overrunning the world, which would be completely demonic. <laughs> in contrast, while the face... With this, we are faced with the same problem regarding primordial beast behemoth. He castrated the male, but only made the female frigid. This reason he had to kill the female Leviathan and not simply make it frigid, the Talmud states, is because fish mate even when they are cool, when they're not uh, passionate. They just do it, just, just to progenerate. It follows this, and that the Jewish people derive their souls from the realm of holiness. Non-Jews, however, possess only the level of fish, and it goes into this. Of course, we, we, we've already, we, we know that, that that is not the absolute on that. And so now all of these different brains in the realm of evil are identified by the name, by the book of Adam Yashir. The two brains of evil of Zah and Absolute are termed, these are the two spies. Jo Joshua's two spies. As mentioned in the Zohar, the two brains of evil Nukva of Atzalut are called the two birds. We see the word Hebrew Zephor is considered feminine in many places. Um, now, the ritual of the two birds, because of these two birds, signify the men mentality of the female. Um, and why does it say, keep saying female, female? It's talking about Guvarot. Talking about Guvaro, um, is is the egocentric, self-serving mentality, um, which is the Gentile way of thinking. We are egocentrical, self-serving people, living only for the high, the experience, um, uh, which is the root of Zara Ot. It is indulgence and slander and and vicious. And indignation and egocentricisms um, that makes a person, person uh, a mere subject of their conversation without regard for their feelings or their reputation. He must therefore be ostracized and sent out of the camp until his condition passes. A part of this purification is the two birds which are, in other words, maybe removing the impurity out of his brain, which is where it's all happening. So, that is Metzora. Okay. Wow, huh? Wow. And actually... What it says is, it says is that the the female Leviathan was killed and skinned. That is, but what is her skin? It's the canopy of the sukkah of the world to come. It is that light, because what did it just say? A woman's daat is light. light. So, it. It, what he did, he moved it from one spot to the other. <laughs> okay, now, the next portion, there's two things we want to look at. Number one, Hashem spoke to Moses after the death of Aaron's two sons when they approached Hashem, <clears throat> when they approached before Hashem and they died. And Hashem spoke to, spoke to Moses, speak to Aaron, your brother. And there's a dash right there, so he said something to him, right? Mm -hmm. He shall not come in at all times into the sanctuary. This is what we were talking about. There's times to do this and that. In front of the cover upon the ark, so that he should not die. For in a cloud I will appear upon the ark cover. And on and on. It might have been Ecclesiastes for that. Yeah, scripture. or maybe it's Ecclesiastes, yeah. And so, and, and he got to put on these these tunics. He's got to wear this certain things. Look on, look in chapter 18 if you have your Torah with you. 
something very crucial. Verse 5. This is verse 5. This is very, 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 very crucial. It says, You shall observe my decrees and my laws which man shall carry out and by which he shall live. I am Hashem. Guess what the word man is right there? Adam. Adam. It does not say the children of Israel or the people. Mm -hmm. It says which Adam should carry out. So that's all of us. Yes. Now, let's get into that. How about it? That is all of us. Now, <clears throat> Akremot, which means after death. Alright, so, after the death of what? After the death of Nadav and Avihu. Now, we've discussed this before. What was the reason that they were killed? They weren't married. They weren't married. Well, there's actually 12 reasons. Okay? <laughs> they weren't, they did, they, it wasn't a permitted sacrifice. They did it on their own. They, all right, they did, it, they did it on their own. That's another one of the things. Uh, one of it says they were drunk with wine, right? No. They were drunk with wine. And one that says they played with strange fire, right? So... Let's ask ourselves, what on earth were they thinking, right? How stupid could they possibly be? They were overly enthusiastic and passionate about... You know, they're going to go in there, they're going to do it on their own, they're going to light this incense up. Did they know what they were doing? Absolutely. <laughs> so why did they do it? Did they knew they were going to... Let me ask you a question. They had to rectify something. Where else do we see wine? No. Well, oh, 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 no, it was drunk too. Where else do we see drunk wine? Lot? Daughters? Yeah. Yeah? Alright. Where else do we see it? Jesus turned the water into wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he turned Hesed into Guvero. Good move. Yeah. Good move there. Wine is Guvero? Oh, yeah. Okay. But what about Purim? Oh. The wine That's of gladdening. Sad. There's two modes. And it also, we have learned that, you know, we've heard that that Adam, you know, that grapes were the, were the fruit, right? There was uh, some, you know, some say apple, but, you know, the Torah lists grapes as one of the fruits. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we see there's a issue here with, so you're telling me, that Nadav and Avihu, the top priests, go down to the local bar, line them up a bunch of wine tequila shots, get hammered, and say they're going to go into the Holy of Holies and light it up. Sounds like a bunch of good old boys. Just a bunch of good old boys. Come on. <laughs> got to be something else going on. Right? Russell and Mike. Yeah. They were, <laughs> Russell and Mike get all tanked up and go in the Holy of Holies. We're going to light up, we're gonna light up yeah. some incense and talk to God. Yeah, a big head too. <laughs> and poop, poop, they're gone. So, so, here's what we have. There's strange fire is Ash Zara. And we have Avoda Zara, right? Mm -hmm. Avoda Zara is service or work. Avoda is service or work. 
Zara, alien or strange? External. Ash, Zara, is strange fire. This is the same one of Noah. This is the heavy guva rope. The heavy, heavy guva rope. What were they trying to do? What, what do we remember? What was Noah trying to do? He was trying to fix that crack in the klipa of the heavy guva rope, right? Mm -hmm. He was trying to do the same. What was Adam trying to do? Trying the same to... thing. Yeah. What are these guys trying to do? Same thing. The same thing they were trying to do. They knew the formula. They knew what they had to do. But what what big thing were they trying to fix? The big cleft in the crack of Guva Rote? What started this whole thing a few parches back? The golden calf. The golden calf. The air rod. The golden calf. This was their mission. Why did they build the tabernacle to begin with? <laughs> that was the purpose. We got to clean it all up. What does incense do? We know it drives away all evil. There's, yeah, they knew they they had the formula. These guys were the ultimate chemist, nuclear reactor chemist the world has ever known. But they didn't see the short circuit in the wire <laughs> that caused the explosion on the reactor. The janitor hit it with a broom. Right? So, that's the overview. Let's get into it. Now, there is wheat, there are figs, there are grapes, and there are etrobes. These are the four uh, fruit of the Garden of Eden, right? Wheat is hesed, uh, grapes are guvarot, uh, figs are teferit, and the etrog is yisod. Now, uh, in, this, in, in this book, of, uh, in the Ark Scroll, it lists 12, 12 other reasons. But they were had intoxicating wine, and then there's the wine of... Uh, Ecstasy, which is the wine of Purim, you know. So, two modes. They're both guvarot. One's guvarot to guvarot. One's hesed to guvarot. But if you're working on guvarot to guvarot, you're in intoxicating wine country. In you know, in California's uh, what do they call it? Napa, Napa Valley. Valley. <laughs> you're you're in Napa Valley. All right. Now, they died for. The sanctification of God's name. Kadush Hashem. They are tzaddikim. The highest. And it says they are higher than Moses and Aaron. Now wait a minute. Is anybody higher than Moses and Aaron? Moses said they were higher than Moses and Aaron. And we're going to find out why. Fire came down. Two streams of fire came down, went up their nose, burned out their soul, and their body was unaffected. Why wasn't their body affected? Why was only their soul affected? Let's find out why. Now, their death, i.e. their separation, was immediate tikkun for the golden calf. Their death immediately tikkuned the golden calf. Why? Which is what they wanted. But their, yes. That was their goal. But yes. They may not have realized yes. that they would have died. Yes. They were the final tikkun. Why? Because you remember the two guys, Giannis and Yambers, the two sorcerers that tricked Aaron into uh Hey, hey, look at this slot of hand trick and turn around while we build the golden calf. Mm -hmm. Because he was tricked by those two guys, these two guys got the fate. Right? It wasn't their fault. But let's find out who they were. Who they really were. They were the Mon. They were the instant Maim Nukvim that caused 
the upper realms to forgive the golden calf. It instantly was the tacoon. Uh, no one among the nation was capable of making this rectification, Moses and Aaron included. This sanctified the house and the name of God. They took in their 11 spices. There are 11 types of hides, noga, on skins on the tabernacle. So they were pulling all the sparks out of the Noga. That is the correlation of the 11. Mm -hmm. it, it, the, the spices remove the interference of the Zivug. What's the Zivug? Union. That's the Hebrew term for union. So it can take place without the virus around. No klepa can be around. And they knew this. They became the living um, intersection for the Nukva. Greater are their tzaddikim in their death than their time of living. Because the tacoon that their, their soul brings up to the world. All right? Now, I'm going to read, uh, we're going to go into a little bit about Nadav and Avihu here. Regarding Nava, Nadav and Avihu, let us note the letters that spell the name Nadav, Nundalad Vet. And regarding, it, it is arranged to spell four sons, Ben Dalad. Thus, his name are the four sons spoken of by Torah, Adam, Cain, Abel, and Seth. Okay, those are the four sons. <clears throat> All four were included in Nadav and Avihu. For the two of them were considered one person because they were not married. See, you're only, you're only one half. And when you get married... She's your other half. Then you become one, one couple. They were not married. So they were as if they were one person. Who were they? Adam. And if you broke it down, Cain, Abel, Seth. Right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's the Gilgal of who these people were. That's why Moses said, they are higher than us. No one could have done it but them. All right? The name Avihu alludes to Adam. Since the word splits into two, Avihu, which means he is my father. All right? These two committed the same sin that Adam committed. This blemish was that of strange fire, foreign woman. It is referring to the heavy guru road, the drunken wine of Lilith, who copulated with Adam before the real Eve. That is why it is said about Eve, and if you'll look in Genesis 2.23, it says, this one, this, not these, this one shall be called woman. Speaking of Eve. If you want to know where is Lilith in the scripture, well, they're not going to mention her. But if you, why did he have to say, this one will be called woman, Eve? Because there must have been another one. You see where it's at? So, um, Lilith's real name is Layla. It means night. According to the Midrash, Lilith was Adam's first wife, created out of, the, out of the earth just as he was. She insisted on lying on top of Adam during intercourse, and when he refused, 
insistent that it was more proper for him to lay on top of her, she let him and was transmutated to a demon. Now, be, be, because Guru, because Guru always wants to control. I'm on. I'm. I'm uh, on top of you. I'm ahead of. I'm above you, so to speak. Okay. Now, our stages allude um, that when they said that Adam stretched his membrane over to cover his reproductive organ, this is a euphemism meaning that he copulated with his first Eve, Lilith. You know, stretched out, stretching out Yisod, which was the ot at the, at the time. You know, because he was looking into that realm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and sired many evil, uh, evil spirits and demons. All right, we we understand this was Adam's strange fire. All right, um, this is, is the whole reason for the covenant of circumcision, right? Nadav and Avihu committed the same error. Therefore, they uh, on 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 somewhat more of a refined level, this is essentially the mistake or sin Adam made when he opted originally for Lilith. Self-indulgent sexuality has its own ecstasy. And it could be called spiritual ecstasy. But when its ecstasy is for its own sake, it was ultimately egocentric and evil. Therefore, Nadav and Avihu were punished just as Adam was punished. Their punishment, like all divine punishments, was a mere chastisement or vengeance, but a direct result, an outcome of their misdeed. They sought the ecstasy of the, of the soul and shunned the experience of of their life bodies. Therefore, their bodies were not harmed. So their souls left their bodies and rejoined their divine origin, leaving their bodies lifeless corpses. They, uh, This was the whole guru, and it said that Eve squeezed, that Lilith squeezed grape for Adam and all this stuff. Now, Adam sinned additionally in wanting to draw all the nations under his wings. See, Adam could see not only, you know, Israel, which was he, he could see all the 70 nations. They were all within him. And what he wanted to do was bring all, all everything under one thing. Right? And so, because these guys are, in, are, are, are Adam, what are they doing? They're wanting to rectify everything. The heir of Ra, all 70 nations. They're wanting to fix it and bring everything under one thing. Is it because their compassion's too broad? Yes, fraud? yes, yes. They're, they're, they're trying to get everything going. This caused the suffering that befell through and, and exiled because exiled the inside fell out and exiled Israel. Moses was erred in this way, and, th because, and therefore he had to die in the desert as well. King Solomon also erred in the same thing. Why? Timing. Timing. So, Adam, Moses, Solomon erred in thinking that if the non-Jews convert to Judaism, the Jewish drive for spiritual for spirituality would combine with the non-Jews drive for physical perfection. This would, they thought, have a double effect on the Jewish spiritual drive, keeping it from de degenerating into egocentric ecstasy and spiritualizing the non-Jew physical drive, keeping it from degenerating its egotistical materialism. However, all of them erred. They were all trying to fix it. And there's nothing wrong with what Adam is just trying to fix it the whole time. And obviously, it's going to get fixed. So what should he have done? Well, you always you always have to understand in every in every failure, um, there is a piece of excellence. Let's let's say let's say you're you're swinging at a baseball and you strike out. 
You missed the baseball, but your swing was perfect. It was just timing. You swung too early. You missed the ball. Or you swung too late, and you missed the ball. In every instance of failure is perfection. What is Adam doing? He's just fixing coordinates. That's all he's doing. He's fixing coordinates. Now, uh, <coughs> um, the the next thing the, the next thing is is, is the is the scapegoat here. Now, there uh, I don't know that we're not going to have time uh, uh, to go into all the Zohar. But just know, it says in the Zohar that. If you read the story, this Parsha of Nadav and Avihu on Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, your children will not die before you. Because you take on the sorrow of Aaron and sympathize with Aaron, therefore your children are protected. How about them apples? That sounds good. How about them apples? How about them apples? Now. And is it extra reading? Huh? Is, are you talking no, about No, no. This, what you're supposed to do the afternoon of Yom Kippur is read the deal of Nadav and Abihu. Why? But because you're not supposed to have union on that day. Mm -hmm. They were the union. You see what I'm saying? <coughs> not only are you identifying with supernal union, but you're also identifying with lower loss. So what are you doing on Yom Kippur? That's the day Adam and Eve are having supernal union. Zah and Nuke are having supernal union. That's why you don't. But if you also add Nadav and Avihu, which is, which is what was going on, and you, you understand it on a higher level, on the lower level, it's the loss from a father. So you're connecting on that level too. So I have a question. Are we supposed to read the story back when it first happened? Or in no, this? No, this, this, this one. And this, that would be? This uh, Parsha. Yeah, it's uh, Parsha uh, Akremo. Yeah. yeah, Leviticus 16. Start 16. Leviticus 16. Now, we, I'm just going to touch on this real Briefly, um, I, what, what I like to do in this class is I like to read the entire Zohar for the Parsha and then go through and pick out the really cool stuff. And there is some absolutely awesome stuff in Akrimo, uh that we all need to know. Stuff like I just told y'all. Okay? So um, I've, I've read most of it, um, but I, I want to... Uh, maybe next week although we have two it's going to get to one we may have to we may have to finish some of this one add another one and add another one and because I, I want to have it for, for the for the tapes because we need to know mm -hmm. you know so even if even if we have to double up and do a double partia on a week there's not a double partia we will but very important Leviticus 18 5 which man Adam shall live Chaya Ha Adam. He shall live and not die through them. You live through the Torah, you don't die through the Torah. Okay? Jew and non Jew. That is, the Torah says that a Gentile who engages in Torah is considered as if he is a Kohen Gadol. Mm -hmm. Now, what on earth? But why on earth would anybody compare a Torah observant Gentile to a Kohen Gadol? It's ridiculous. It's absurd. Unless you understand the separation of Tikkun and Tohu, which we do. Right? So, Rabbi Meir is the Kabbalist of Kabbalists. He was in the time of Rabbi Akiva. 
How do we know that he is like a coined adult? The man will do and live by, it says, all Adam. Some say it's one who converts in some sources. In some sources, it says it is forbidden for a Gentile to engage in Torah. Only the seven mitzvahs. How broad are the seven mitzvahs? <laughs> it's everything! Some say it's the death penalty. Some Jews say it's the death penalty. You're causing cosmic destruction. Why do they say that? Because they do not want somebody studying it in order to mislead the Jews. That's the death penalty. Everything always has to be qualified. It's never just, if a, if a Gentile studies it, it's a death penalty. No. If a Gentile studies it to mislead a Jew, it's a death penalty. Well, the one problem that they have in a lot of this, and I know it's a, it's in the Mishnah Torah, is that they, they give a, a word of Gentile an overbearing uh, definition, which yeah. in reality is idol worship. Yeah. It, it's a death penalty for an idol worshiper to study Torah. Well, it, 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 also, it also extends to Noahide, however. Every, because Noahide, if you know what a Noahide is as we know it, a Noahide is every Gentile. And here's the secret. I'm getting it. If a Noahide should be honored like a Kohen Gadol, even if his investigation leads him to study the precepts of Torah, since he purposes to come closer to Hashem, why a Kohen Gadol? A one who enters the Holy of Holies and is absolutely unique. He is unique in two reasons. He wears eight garments. The Levite wears four. He goes into the sanctuary. The Levite does not. The Kohen Gadol does not. What is why is a Noahide who studies the Torah a Kohen Gadol? Because he separates himself from the Noahides. And he has union to enter the sanctum, sanctuary. Because he can enter the sanctuary. What is it talking about? Well, there's two things. There's Tikkun and there's Tohu. Who is the head of Tikkun? Kohen Gadol. Who is the head of Tohu? The Noahide that studies Torah. He's comparing him to a Kohen Gadol. Not on the same side. Not in the same level. You see what I'm saying? You are the top of the bottom. In other words. In other words, he's saying you're the you're the top of the tohu. Does that make sense? A you, Gentile that studies Torah is the top of the tohu. He's the Noga. He's the light. Yeah. He's the Noga. He's not a Kuinga doll. It says he's like a Kuinga doll. Where? In the tohu, not in the tikkun. Not on this side. Not inside of Israel. On the side of Tohu. Where we're dealing with. And that's what they're not finishing with. Right. And some of them are thinking that it's gonna that the, Yeah, gonna, that it applies to Israel. No, no, no. You you yeah, can't yeah. be that. You you can't even get over in that. But who's gonna pull out the sparks over here? Who's gonna be the high priest in the Tohu? The Noahide, who's the 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 Torah observant Ger Gerurim, who separates himself from the Noahide. That is the nuts and bolts, ladies and gentlemen. Now,
there's there's the 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 Kohen would go in the tenth of Tishri with eight garments. You have ten of Tishri, you have eight garments. That is eighteen. We all know what eighteen is. Spine. The spine. It's Chaya. It's the Gematria of Chaya. It's Yus Yud Het eighteen. It is Yasod. It is Sadiq. So, when Rabbi Richmond <laughs> writes a letter and says, you are truly a tzaddik, he's not talking about the world of Tikkun, he's talking about the world of Tohu. Yeah. Makes sense. But, not in this life, because everyone dies. It is for Alom Haba. The higher dimensional, you are the higher dimensional conduit in the world of Tohu. Because it says, I am Hashem. Zivu. Ani Hashem is the word. Ani is Malchut Nukva. Who is Hashem? Zah. So, if it would have said Anohi, it would have been Keter. Hashem, Zah. But it can't. It has to say, you have to do this, and through it you shall live, which is Yesod, which is what connects Malchut and Zeranpin, which is Yesod. So through the Torah and through the mitzvah, you become the thing that connects and causes union with Zeranpin and the Nukva because you were the one that separated yourself out. You get it? You become that living spark that allows union to take place, which is what Nadav and Avihu did. So, in the Zohar, incense means connecting. Connecting. You become the union. Now, this all's taken place, we know, many chapters ago when it was talking about Yom Kippur. Because this happened on that day. What does the rest of the Parsha past 18.5 talk about? I don't know. And a man shall not lie with a beast, and a woman shall not do this. And all of the sexual perversions. Because it's all about union. The rest of it is what blemishes the union of Zeranpin and Nukfa, which is higher dimensional the, the sexual sin here causes higher dimensional sin. Because when you separate yourself out and you become the conduit that allows the higher realms, you become tzaddik that uh, uh, allows the higher realms to have union, then it lists all the things you shouldn't do to keep you pure. You see how the Torah is, how, it's, how God's taking it through and how, how we separate, separate, separate. The this, the this, the groups, the this, the men, the women, the this, the blood, the semen, the, the food, the thought, the speech, the sex. Everything. Categorized everything in the perfect order. Although it didn't happen in that order. You see the, you see the confluence the Torah is written in? It's amazing. It's amazing. Only God could do that. Man could not think of this. There's no way. So, we will, if y'all wouldn't like, we will go through the scapegoat, because this deals with Tohu, okay? Because it's done on Yom Kippur. Uh, tohu and Tikkun, 
and Azazel and Samael and, and the goats and everything. If y'all want to, we'll deal with scapegoat and I will cover some stuff from Akre Mot and the Zohar next week. It talks about Tamar, talks about all kind of stuff going on in there. All right? Because what it, she, you know, she had some sexual things that she had to do for tikkun purposes. Mm -hmm. All right? So anyway, that is Parsha Mitzorah and most of Akrimot. So, uh, we, will, we will finish, uh, we will start, uh, um, if, if, if y'all would like, maybe, uh, maybe we do two classes next week or something and uh, try to get caught up a little more or something. Well, one, week, one week we're probably going to have to double up. You know? If it depends on your schedule. If, if it's a good week Well, you know, we, we may could do a Wednesday, Thursday next week or something. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I'll let everybody know. But uh, anyway, Hashem is amazing. The Torah is amazing. And the sages are amazing. And we will see y'all next week. Air Tov. Turn that off. Yeah, how'd you like that one?